everyone, this is Arabda and you're watching Interfaced. And today for Interfaced, we have a very special guest because we have got the Director of Security, Gabby, joining us in for an interview. Gabby, welcome to the show. And why don't you start by telling us a little bit about yourself? Hi, Arabda. Thank you so much for inviting me to this interview. Uh, I'm Gabby. I'm the Director of Security at Halborn. I'm uh, 34 years old. I was born and raised in Almería, which is a small town in the southeast of Spain. But now I'm living, I live in Madrid. I'm married. I have uh, two daughters. Um, yeah, my story before Halborn, uh, I was a Spanish, a Spanish Navy officer for 10 years. And among my assignment, I spent uh, four years as chief engineer of, of a submarine, which is something special. Then I was assigned to a Spanish Joint Cyber Command for three years. And I did a lot of research in blockchain. So we can say I've been involved in, in blockchain since uh, 2017. Okay, super interesting. So you moved from submarines to blockchain. How does that uh, change feel like? Yeah, you know, at, at the end it's, it's super similar because submariners and people who work in blockchain, we are specials and we need to be calm because, you know, the market is uh, changed a lot. And in submarine, we, we live some changes of the situation. So I think my experience in submarine uh, was super nice for working now in blockchain. Excellent. Gabby, what would you say is your hacking style? Yeah, so I, th I think hacking something is something like 90% uh, methodology and almost 10% of creativity. So if you follow in the methodology uh, and you know uh, the vulnerabilities we have uh, nowadays, uh, you will complete the audit, but you know, nevertheless, the coolest uh, vulnerabilities uh, discovered applying the, this creativity. You know, I, I usually use two different approaches. The first one is the KISS methodology. All hackers know, know that is keep it simple, stupid. You know, sometimes yeah. the simplest is the best. And the other, the other methodology I use is think like a criminal you know if you think like a criminal you will be able to to discover the vulnerability and to patch it in order to to avoid uh, criminals will exploit it uh, in the future i love that approach think like a criminal i'm sure like a lot of us at halborn we always say the best approach is to break like steve quotes a lot of times so that's uh, quite an interesting way to approach it what would you say, because you must have had a very interesting series of uh, projects as well, what would you say is your most cherished finding thus far? Yeah, in fact, I discovered some cool things here, but the, the best, the most important for me, it was I was able to modify the, the amount in a, in a bridge between different blockchain. Yeah, f first of all, I just a quick uh, explanation about that. When you want to link uh, two different blockchain, you need something in the middle, like uh, in order to index and um, process the transaction. Okay. And the name of that is Relayer on another blockchain. The name is Warden. Mm -hmm. So if you are able to manipulate in a, in a centralized uh, Relayer to manipulate the transaction, and you, you will be able to, for instance, uh, uh, minting infinite tokens or modifying the transaction for sending the, the money uh, to you. So I think it was my, my, my share is finding. Wow, that's quite a story. Well, do you think from your perspective as, a, as an ethical hacker as well, is it possible to be at some point unhackable? Yeah, no, nowadays criminals and, and security people are in, like in, a, in a crazy race, you know, criminals, uh, always has a little advantage because they are just focusing in one thing right. while security people we need, we need to make like a lot of things safe so uh, something we, we can say something is safe today but 
we don't know if it will save tomorrow. So the, the best point here is uh, when hackers realize it, that making some research and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and try to hack something, some things, you know, some new things, uh, we could discover things before the criminals and, and patch them before the vulnerability can be exploited. We are a little bit close to the criminals, but it's almost impossible to be at the, in the same level as the criminals. <laughs> Well, from what you're saying, uh, saying, apparently we always need to stay a couple of levels ahead of the criminals and do our research and stay very much yeah. updated on what's happening in the industry, right? Okay. Yeah. All right. So what would you say is Halborn in a kind of a summarized way to you right now? Yeah, for me, uh, Halborn, we could define Halborn in, in three words, maybe. Okay passion, uh, curiosity, and, and of course, team. Passion because, you know, the blockchain stuff, uh, mm -hmm. people, who is, who, people who are involved in, in blockchain uh, know blockchain generates uh, something super cool in, in your mind. And yeah. honestly, I, I, job, I love my job. Uh, curiosity because, you know, honestly, my, my first interest in blockchain was uh, thanks to the curiosity about the, the technology mm -hmm. and nowadays new protocols are being built and new blockchains are, and uh, obviously curiosity is part of my job I, I, I'm sure uh, and for sure the team you know in the yeah. very beginning when, when we are few people at Halborn we needed to be linked to be joined for, for doing the job and now uh, the team is growing up and the most important thing is keeping that team uh, together and being together for for the next challenge will be we, we will have you know in in a future or, or maybe in at present yeah yeah speaking of people and teams we have been growing vastly and i'm sure you're managing quite a few projects and teams are over there uh, what is your management style? How do you see yourself as someone who uh, manages all these different projects and teams? Yeah, I've, I've learned management in my, my former job in the military. Uh, apparently, you can think, you know, military, the, the first thing is like uh, to be a strict uh, or rude with, with your team. Mm. So I think it's something from films, <laughs> but, yeah. but not at all. You know, you need to create a team, you know, when you go in a shape or or lead a team you, you need to create a, a real team so so people should should trust you because you have shown them they they can they can trust you by conviction not not by imposition so i try to to know the people in deep and you know like squeeze their best skills and in that way everyone will be happy and and everyone will give their best knowing how far each one can go. Wow, that's such an interesting insight that you took from defense and military and you plugged it in yeah. into your management style here. Interesting. Okay, so uh, here's a fun one. What is that one thing that you wish you could remind yourself pretty much all the time? Yeah, the, the first thing is something I learned from my father is the best thing are only achieved with effort. That's, that's true. And and in, and also when when things go well, you are not the best, and when mm -hmm. things go wrong, you are not the worst. You you should realize things can be uh, can go uh, well or wrong, but you should keep the the same person. And obviously, we don't know everything, so so there is all there is always something to learn and. And always learn. I learn many things from everyone, even if they are not related to 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 my job, to to DeFi, to blockchain. Mm -hmm. uh, for sure, you can extract something interesting from people and apply this thing to to my life or or to my job. You can you can learn from from anyone a lot of things. Yeah, absolutely. I love the first part that you said, which was to stay grounded and. You're not a product of the things that you're doing right now. You're just a separate entity. That's a beautiful thought. 
Okay, to end um, this uh, chat, let's uh, let's ask you something unique about you that we don't know thus far as your team. Yeah, in general, I consider myself uh, a fairly normal person. <laughs> I adore my family, my wife, and my two daughters. You know, I have them always in my head, and I'm a great fan of Real Madrid. <laughs> I usually go to the to the stadium whenever I can. Yeah. And yeah, I can say watching football, I'm not the cult person you are you are watching and you know. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, I I like to play golf uh, mm -hmm. from time to time. And maybe one thing could be could be weird, could be strange, is I love sailing, yeah, because of wow. my 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 former job especially by sail. So, in fact, I, I'm a judge captain. Uh -huh. and whenever I can in summer, I, I go sailing. I love it. And before I competed in, in some competitions and at a good level. But, you know, in Madrid, it's, <laughs> it's yeah. a little bit difficult. <laughs> well, at least now we have a, a couple of more reasons of why you stay in Madrid and in Spain in general. All right, Gabby, yeah. thank you so much for your time and for sharing your insights with us. Uh, to our viewers, stay tuned. We are coming up with a lot of uh, interesting episodes very soon. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much.